What's up and welcome to our podcast, Toast to Tea. We're two friends that love the world of celebrity and pop culture and talking about it with you. To join our world of celebrity, make sure to rate, like, and subscribe to our podcast. Now hit it. It's about that time. Wait, where's the Chris Cam? To say cheers to our world of celebrity. 1,000%. They're back together and it feels just right. Miss Mika, Mika, nice nice to to meet meet you. Raise your glass. I'm Madison Hill. And I'm Courtney Revolution. Because it's our moment to toast to tea. tea. Courtney, hello, hello. You got the Taylor Swift merch on. Yes, go on. And I know you just got back from Disney, so you know I have so many questions. Madison, you already know um, that I've made wearing a hoodie on this podcast my thing by mistake. (laughs) <laughs> um, so I feel like now if I don't wear one, it'll be kind of strange for people that binge watch. Um, cause at least for the past like five, six or seven episodes, I'm wearing a hoodie with the hood up. No, um, I feel like I it's now, it's now the aesthetic. <laughs> it's and now I live the aesthetic. It. Being cozy. Exactly. Um, but Disney was a lot of fun. I had never stayed at a Disney property before. So they had us, um, stay at the Glen. Well, let me explain what it was. Disney had, uh, uh, 80 plus black creators out there for a summit called the power of joy. Um, which was basically created to like motivate and inspire um, black creators to make their own memories so that they have memories to share with their next generation and so on and so on and so on. Because I love that. For, for like a lot of us uh, black people, we're, we haven't had the, the resources to get to Disneyland or get to Disney World. And so they let us uh, sort of like roam the park. We were able to have all these photo opportunities uh, so that we could share our experiences on social media and, and have these memories for our families uh, for the future, you know? Also, sorry if y'all hear it. this loud ass garbage man outside, y'all. <laughs> It's fine. He's taking the garbage out. But no, how was the Grand Californian? Because that was your first time staying there. And that is one of my family and I's favorite places. Whenever we're treating ourselves, we love a a bougie little Disney staycation at the Grand Californian. Madison, let me tell you something. I could not imagine staying anywhere else if I were going to Disneyland only because how, why would I want to stay somewhere that's not connected to the parks? Like, you get what I'm saying? So, like, mm-hmm. my, my bedroom was right above the Sephora in downtown Disney. Um, so I just opened up that curtain. Girl. You have the best view. And you get to yeah. see all the people, like, rushing to the park. And you're like, I'm just enjoying my hotel. Yes. I'm enjoying yes. the luxury. I had a grand candied uh, coffee this morning. <gasps> Good. And, um, it was very uh, boozy and delicious. Uh, um, okay. I haven't even had that. I need to oh, yeah. have that. They have, like, a section of, like, boozy coffees. Um, for the room service. So that was like my little treat to myself before I okay. left this morning. Was Delish. Like, I'm always so boring. I'm like, just give me plain Disney. Co- get the caffeine in my veins so I can get to the rides. <laughs> the caffeine. <laughs> Madison, let me tell you something. Speaking of rides, I really want to say shout out. Um, oh my gosh. You <laughs> Because. You well, have to tell everyone. I got a text afterwards, but you need to let the community know about the ride experience. <laughs> You guys, I'm not a weenie. I want to make that very clear. Like, I have, like, ridden the... Girl, we've done Tower of Terror. I've done Dominator at the Dorney Park for my East Coast girlies that know. Like, I've I've ridden the rides, right? Also, ridden- I think everyone needs to know, Courtney did the Disney College program. So, like, yeah, I did the Disney College program. Been I've ridden, to Disney like- World, done that, been there, got the t-shirt. Like, you... Not a novice. Not- no, this is not your first rodeo at Disney. No, ma'am. No. But y'all, let me tell you how my day yesterday went. So me and a group of the girlies um, went and had breakfast with some Disney executives. It was really, a, really like a fun networking connecting moment. And then we were able to roam the park. Girl, we got on Miss Indiana Jones, girl. The boulder did not get us. It was the first time I'd written that one. So I had like oh, it's a, so fun. oh my God, so fun. Yeah. Um, and, and then your adrenaline is going. So like right. as soon as uh, Kaylin was like, uh, let's go to Hyperspace Mountain. Well, I've ridden Space Mountain um, in Florida 50,000 million times. So I was like, yeah, Space Mountain, woo! <laughs> Like, I li- Madison, I was like, now, let's go! My favorite part about the story is you did post on your Instagram. Like, you were hyped. Notice Living how there was best. no aftermath. Oh, I know there was no aftermath. But that's what makes me giggle the most, obviously. Because you were so hyped going on. And then... Radio silence. L- literally no story <laughs> frames after that until the Nothing. dead of night. Y'all, I got on Hyperspace Mountain and for like literally the first 
minute of the ride, fun. Hands up, girl, yes, God. And then all of a sudden, as the ride starts to go down, I'm just getting dizzier and dizzier and dizzier. Madison, when I got off the ride, you know how they'd give the picture at the end? Mm -hmm. Literally, my friend Thaddeus is like, because he's big, he's like crunched up in the corner of the car. I'm literally completely head down, (laughs) eyes shut, tucked away like someone is truly harming me. Y'all, I felt like so seasick. Like I was on the rockiest boat. And I was dripping sweat. My friends, these are like new friends I've made, like online like, mutuals I've known Hi. for years. Unwell after the second ride. Unwell so after fun. the second ride. They're like, yeah, we're going to go get drinks, California Adventure, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm going to head back to the hotel room. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> and like literally like crawl back to the hotel room where I laid in bed in the dark and ordered room service. No, honestly, not a bad way to spend a Disney day though. Room service. Room season. Like I told my sister, in-room dining are three of my favorite words at a hotel. When I check in and they say, in-room dining goes till midnight, I'm like, I'm going to love it here. I have loved room service since I was a little tyke. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I was so sad to hear that it took you out. But Courtney, no, you're not alone. I've taken Holly on Space Mountain. She cried. Sorry, oh, no. Holly, I'm, out, I'm outing you to the community. Oh, no, we love it, you, Holly. It, it was, it was a, it's funny. It, it's it, it's <laughs> funny now. Said. It's funny now. It's funny now. Papa <laughs> Hill, my dad cannot ride Space Mountain, Courtney. He gets dressed like you. Like the cold sweats, unwell. Yeah. So I just want you to know, like, you're not the only one who Space Mountain takes out. I want to say this, Madison. I, it only took me out for like seven hours. I jumped, back, like, by 10, 10, 45 a.m., I was, like, back in the bed, like, Ugh. But by 7 p.m., I was, Ready for girl, a cocktail. freshly showered at the the finishing ceremony with the leaders, girl, key king, toasting, cheers, and group pictures, ready to, uh, for the Just Star like Wars after left. party. It was like I never left. I live for it. I live for it. <laughs> the last thing I want to discuss before we get into the tea, which mm-hmm. is not, does it? Sound like it's having as much of a positive return as you to the um, Disney get together. What do we really quick think about Vanderpump going on pause? Girl, I gagged only because I was just told approximately eight days ago that they were picking cameras back up in July. I was personally told by someone on camera that we are, girl, get ready, because we are filming in July, personally, eight days ago. Eight days ago. And and before those eight days, seven days ago. So I was told twice, back to back. (laughs) So, like, I know if I was gagged, they were gagged. So it was a rushed decision. But honestly, I have to say, after a while, I have not caught up on Vanderpump in a couple weeks. Mm Mm-hmm. I've been watching The Valley, if you can believe. Remember how I was such a oh girl? Because it's Madison, so much can I better. Upset you? Oh what? Oh no! Don't be upset. Who's cringy? We were supposed to be at the Goat premiere last night. <laughs> I know. It's okay. It's okay. The Disney thing. I thought it was next week. It's okay. No, I know. And, the, and they were all and they were all there. And I, I like went on Jasmine's story and I went, oh, the ah! goat premiere. No. <gasps> I just feel like the valley right now, where it stands, is superior to Vanderpump right rules. It's, oh, yeah, it's Vanderpump just not really maybe the reunion's gonna bring the heat with Lala and Ariana getting oh, into it. But I've got tea. Oh, spell it. I okay, so I was very fortunate um, to attend a drag show um, that was thrown by a leukemia survivor uh, named a, a drag queen named Sparkle, Jared Lips on the inter- on the Instagram. Um, Love it. it was a beautiful evening, and obviously they had some reality personalities there, such as myself, but also and Ariana Maddox was there. That was the big mm-hmm. oh my god, Ariana's there, right? So I noticed that they that Miss Janet. I didn't know Miss Janet and Ariana were you know. So they sat together, but oh. I noticed that Jesse. Uh-huh. They put Jesse all the way on the opposite side of the room, and Jesse never interacted with Janet, with Janet? And, and, and Ariana. So I, what's the tea there? Are they not cool? We need the reunion right away. I feel like I'm, uh, what's her name? Juicy Scoop. Yes, <laughs> I love this real life. I was, 
Hello, Hello McDonald. Hello, McDonald. Girl, Hello, my McDonald. boots was on the was on the ground, girl. You were boots on the ground. <laughs> Wait, that's really interesting. You know, I saw Jesse has a new girlfriend because his wife is, Michelle is she hot blonde? Is, is she platinum blonde? Yeah. She was there. I saw her. Which I okay. This is me judging. I know nothing about this girl. I'm sure she is the sweetest human, but she just is giving rebound. The looks is giving Courtney. You saw her in person. I, I did imagine see her in she's person. even more done up in person. She was beat. She was beat. The lips she was, are she was, thing. She was beautiful, but I know exactly what you. You mean. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it looks like a post divorce, post separation relationship. Do you think that? No shade. Given that, and I'll just say this to be fair. Jesse and Michelle couldn't give each other what the other needed. That maybe they both. Deserve a fun little kiki 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 rebound. Oh, one million percent. She's already moved on. Uh, as well, soon according as to I Kristen, her, according to Kristen, she's been, she got she's been <laughs> moved on. Uh, uh, I will say, you know, something that is refreshing about Kristen and Jax, they do not mature. They just stay the yeah. same. Yeah. You know, but here's and like, the thing. without awesome. Kristen, girl, the story's not moving along. And also, Madison, let me say this, and I think it's important to say about Miss um, Kristen Doty and and the Valley situation specifically, right? Because I I'm, I don't know every little thing about the Vanderpump girlies, but here's here's my thing: if y'all if y'all wasn't acting up and telling Kristen, you wouldn't be in no you wouldn't be in no pickle. Michelle, you know you've seen Vanderpump Rules. What made you think that even if she was your friend, right? Like I could befriend Kristen, mm -hmm. but if I was doing some dirt, some dirty not dog dirt, I'm just not gonna tell her. Only because I don't want her to say it on camera, but I would love her down. And I think that right. that's fair. Why are y'all doing dirt and then going and telling her? Y'all stupid. And also Michelle, can we you're stupid. Not forget Kristen slept with Jax her Girl. while he was with her best friend. Wake it up. Wake it so up. So I'm just, <laughs> at the end of the day, Ow! we can give this girly the benefit of the doubt all we want. That is the kind of girl she is. That is all I would need to see to never trust Kristen Doty as far as I throw her. She hooked up with Jax while he was with Stassi. And she got she backhanded did. for it, as she should. Uh, you know Donovan? For yes, those, for I the love community, Donovan. Donovan is like my childhood best friend. Donovan, I've introduced him to Vanderpump Rules, um, and he just got to the slap. He lived. It's iconic. I waited for that voice note. I waited. without it's He didn't iconic. even know it existed, and I knew when that voice note came in, he was on season two, episode 13. Absolutely <laughs> iconic. Speaking of getting our friends into our Bravo shows, I have now had Christian watching Atlanta. He <gasps> just is getting introduced to Housewives. He's never seen Real Housewives of Atlanta? Courtney, he has never watched Real Housewives until I just bullied him into it. Like well, I a feel month like ago. that would be his brand. Thank you. A bunch I, of shady that's what I've been telling him. That's what I've been telling him, and he's been denying me, denying me, denying me. Now, Christian. finally gave in, and he is watching Atlanta, and he is obsessed. And well, I yes. knew he would be right. <laughs> I was like, just Kim's also like driving me. with the wine glass. <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Getting her wig pulled. I was like, this is your franchise. Yes. I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh my God, that's beautiful. So shout out to us just really putting mess and drama into our friends' lives. Community, if you need some like good reality shows to giggle at and just be like, these people are nuts, Vanderpump Rules, Real Housewives of Atlanta, join our friends. Mm -hmm. Join our friends. And the Valley too. The mm -hmm. team. And the Valley. And the Valley's on season one, so you won't feel like you, yeah. if you're someone who's like, there's too many seasons of Vanderpump and Housewives, it's overwhelming, go to the Valley. You're yeah, on the just, first it's season. There's just a few episodes in. And it's good. It's, it's I really think it good. has everything. I was I was such a hater to you guys. I was hater. There were people hating. telling me it was going to be bad. I was hating. But I think it has, like, Kristen and Jax haven't changed. They're messy. And then we have Nia and Danny, who are, like, a perfect, ideal couple. I love them. Uh, obsessed. I, I will protect them. them at all costs. Same. Then you have Jasmine, who throws in a little fun. What's the other guy's friend who throws Zach. in fun? Zach. Zach throws in fun. Brittany and Jax are on the brink of what, problems. Who was at the White House, girl? Jesse and Michelle are problems. And then I like Ugh. Janet and her husband, but they're just, like, refreshingly normal. Like, I feel like he's just like, I want to be a lawyer, and I don't really want to be on this, but here I am. I don't know if I love Janet yet. I think she has good style. Um, I feel like Janet is purposely being messy because they're not going to drag her because she's pregnant. And oh, I know. They'll I have to wait like till that. season two. Yeah, I don't like that. So, Janet... 
You better watch them B words. You better watch those. <laughs> one eye. One eye on Janet. <laughs> yeah, one eye on Janet. One eye on Janet and one eye on getting to the T. Cheers, Courtney. Cheers. I'm on my second Stanley of the day. Hmm. I'm on my second Trying coffee to get in of that the water. day. Oh, I obviously had two cups of coffee earlier this morning. You know me. Kicking things off, talking about Miss Anne Hathaway. Hey, Anne. Because she did an interview with Billboard magazine and talked about her two ultimate pop songs and obviously it has people chattering online. Mm. So in this interview with Billboard, Anne Hathaway said, quote, the ultimate pop song for me is Like a Prayer by Madonna, followed by a close second Baby One More Time by Britney Spears. We're really lucky right now. We're living in this glorious time of pop music. There's so many ones out there right now, but these two, I think Toxic is really amazing too. So Anne is a Britney girlie. Ew. Courtney, you are really the music expert. The girlie. For, yes, you are. So what makes the ultimate pop song? What is um, Anne Hathaway talking about? You know what's crazy, Madison, is I've these are like the kinds of things that I think about <laughs> randomly in the gym. Huh, like, I know you do. Like, what's like a really good like why why do I love this pop song? And I think that a really good pop song has something that's infectious about it or heavy relatability. Like we think about why we love Taylor Swift, or even for those of y'all that don't love Taylor Swift, Adele, right? Adele writes about heartbreak in a way that even someone that lost a friend can really, really relate to on top of the fact she can sing her behind off. Um, so I think of like, it's just a, a song that can also be looked back on as like a movement, right? Mm -hmm. Wanna Be by the Spice Girls was like, a movement to me. Yep. Blank Space by Taylor Swift was a movement. Toxic, a movement. Mm -hmm. um, some pop songs are just great pop songs, but not every pop song is like... The ultimate. Um, it's like a moment, mm -hmm. you know? I agree. I feel like it's something you can put on at any point in time, even if 15, 20 years has passed, and everyone still, ah, like has that reaction. Yes. yes. That's how you know it's a hit. And I feel like... Like a Virgin is like that. Yes, Toxic is like that. Baby, one more time. Really? Bartender. T Pain. I knew you know, I, I knew I, I knew you'd agree. <laughs> you know, I would, yeah, my Usher is not necessarily a pop song, but that's another one that's like, as soon as anyone hears Peace Up A Town Down, it's like, yes. It, everybody. That is a perfect example. It unites everybody. You know what I mean? Yes. We all get hyped. We all get excited. And I will say, I feel like. A song right now that has potential. I don't You're know if it'll be. A, yes, I was gonna say I don't know if it'll be a moment in like 10, 15 years, but right I now it's a know. moment. I I think espresso is gonna be looked back on in the way that we look back on Ariana's "Into You." "Into You" for the gays was such a powerful girl. That's the gay song. Okay. Um, and or like "Break Free." I feel like espresso mm. was like could be in that vein. Okay. That's my song, Madison. I love this song. <laughs> I'm working late. Because I'm, I'm a, a singer. singer. <laughs> <laughs> you ate that, Sabrina. <laughs> she did, honestly. Oh, and for her song. to come out with that similar timing of Taylor Swift, like, we got to hand it to her. Yes. She, just, she, just a little song for the Coachella time. She just throws it out there. Like, she still had virability. It still had people talking. And to mm. be talked about simultaneously with Taylor Swift, that is a feat in and of itself. So I think she should be proud of herself. Finally, the people are listening, Madison. Yes, finally. If only people gave that much attention to a little mix, they would probably still be together. Girl, and yes. delivering And delivering pop, just so everyone knows what we missed out on. We missed out on ultimate pop songs, okay? Mm -hmm. But it's fine. I will let my bitterness simmer um, because, Courtney, we have, like, a lot of Britney tea to get into, Ooh. and I know everyone's going to want to know our thoughts. So... Moving on to Britney Spears, our girly who has put out many ultimate pop songs, but I don't know if another one is in our future, sadly. So first up, Courtney, Britney Spears settled the lawsuit against her dad, Jamie Spears. She was suing him for what she felt was mistreatment during the conservatorship. And what's crazy, Courtney, is the news of the settlement was not as big as we would have thought. I feel like it kind of went looked over, which is insane. Um, reportedly, they settled for an undisclosed amount, but TMZ reported that Jamie did not owe Britney anything. Of course, it was very clearly a Jamie source being like, see, it's clear he didn't do anything illegal. He didn't owe her anything at the end of it. And what's crazy is 
at the end of the settlement, she ended up having to pay his legal bills, which cost $2 million. I, I don't want to repeat what Wendy Williams said about the Spears family, but um, y'all know. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just nasty. That's how I feel, too. And honestly, I'm disappointed in Britney's lawyer. I feel like Matthew Rosengart was like a bulldog at the beginning of this. Mm-hmm. But now it just is giving tired. He released Let's a statement after the... Way. Yes. he. This is the statement he released after the settlement. He said, quote, Britney Spears won when her father was suspended as conservator and she obtained her freedom and her civil rights and liberties were restored. She now has obtained her final piece of freedom as she instructed as she no longer will need to be entangled with the court or the court system in this matter. But Britney posted on Instagram and then deleted it, how this long caption about how she felt like she didn't receive justice, how her family did her wrong. Mm -mm. And so the math ain't mathing for me. He, the lawyer was still getting paid, right? So why he not doing uh, his damn job? Guess how much he had to pay the lawyer at the end of all this? $4 million. What? Yes. $4 million. I know Brittany got money over money over money, but that's so much, man. But not... Okay, speaking of the money... $4 million is a lot of money. Not really, Courtney. So allegedly, she came out of the conservatorship, with on, which I'm saying only, but somebody like Britney Spears, who has put up numbers like Beyonce... In the past, obviously not now. But she, when she was thriving and doing her residency and stuff, Brittany was making money, you guys. So the fact that she came out of the conservatorship with only $60 million was surprising to people. $60 million? For somebody who's had, yes, who's had a career like Britney Spears. I remember seeing a Forbes graphic that calculated how she should really be, have a net worth of like two to 400. But obviously it was spent during the conservatorship. Yeah. So now there are so many conflicting reports about her financial status. We had a TMZ report. Someone was saying that Britney Spears is burning through her cash because she obviously went from having everything needing to be approved to now it's kind of like giving a teenager $60 million and being like, go manage your money to survive on this forever. And she's apparently blowing it on, like, lavish vacations, going to French Polynesia, spending about a million dollars every time she goes there, going to Hawaii. And then a source also said similar things to Page Six, saying that, you know, she's blowing through her cash, but no one wants to say anything because they don't want to feel like Jamie 2.0. And then a source spoke to Entertainment Tonight and was like, no, 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 she's not going broke. Like, she's about to recoup money from the book deal. She gets 25% of the sales. Mm. Only? So, yeah, so she they sold about 2 million copies, and she gets 25% of the net profit of the books. I feel like that's very low. I I have no idea on book deals, but it see, I mean, I she did get 45. a 50, Yeah, she did get a $15 million deal plus then the sales, but... Oh, okay, okay. So I think it'll even out, but mm. it to your point about the money, it's just, it's weird that there's all these conflicting reports like, is she going broke? Is she not? Then apparently her mental health is not good. A source told TMZ she's completely dysfunctional. Things were better in the conservatorship. Uh, who she you posted, think is putting those stories out, though? So TMZ, I'm always a little skeptical because I feel like they're, they've are they been pro-Jamie in the past. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, it's convenient to me that a source is coming out and being like, she was so much better under the conservatorship. But then she did post a weird video on her Instagram story and delete it where she was like talking to her new assistant who's in the car using an accent. Calling oh, yeah, Jamie I saw that. Or, yeah, calling Jamie Oh, I was Kiki. I yeah. saw that on Twitter. I was Kiki this morning, girl. I said, <laughs> I know that's right, Brittany. Get her. Yeah, I loved it. I agree. Drag Jamie Lynn as far as you can do it. You <laughs> she know said, what I mean? please, come save me. I'm in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> she was that making fun of me. What was she in? Special Forces or something? Some she reality was on, show. I'm, a, I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. I'm a celebrity. Get me out of here. Yeah, mm. she was dragging Jamie Lynn, which is funny, but I just don't think it helps the reports of like, Brittany is going kooky because it's like people watch that and they're like, she's kooky, all right. Like, yeah. look at her Instagram story. That, Brittany, put me know. on your close friends and, and then post that, okay? Because <laughs> you still a close need, to, you need to share that. Yeah. She needs a close friends. What do we think about Brittany? I feel like she went from no news to all of this not so great news, and uh, I hate to see it. I want Brittany to be okay. Um, I know that there's there will always be people worried about and commenting on her mental health, but I mean, 
as long as she's not sick in the way of like harming other people or like you know I feel like as long as Britney's not harming anybody and herself she's not really hurting her image she'll always be Britney Spears that's from where I sit um and I also what more do we expect from a woman that just got out of a conservatorship and spent like two years straight twirling in her living room like are we surprised Mm -hmm. that this is like her commentary in the car well that's what I was I feel like the system just failed Britney all around. I agree. You know what I mean? Like, it failed her when a couple people could go to a court and say, X, this is happening, make all these accusations, put her under a conservatorship, which I'm not doubting that she didn't need help back then. Absolutely. I think she did. She 1 million percent did. And I think she still needs help now. But I also think we can't have a system where we put all of this control on someone, take it away, and then say, well, good luck, enjoy. Of course. No one is going to be successful in anything like that. Also, no celebrities manage their money by themselves. So why are we expecting Britney to do it? I agree. I feel like someone does need to step in. But I, I, I also am always skeptical about the people around her because who's going to say no to a million-dollar trip to French Polynesia? And also, who does Britney try? Like, if I were her, I don't even know who, who I don't or know how who. I could trust. If you can't even trust your own sister... Your own father, Madison. Your own mother. Your own like, mother. Who do you even tr- I wouldn't even be able to trust my shadow. So when, when when we think about her, the state of her mental health, it's like we we also have to at least a little bit try to just consider always what she's been through. Because I mean, mm-hmm. who knows what Brittany thinks about when she's by herself in the dark? You know, so right. if, if she's able to feel a little hee hee ha ha by kicking in the car and going on her little vacations. Um, so be it, but I want her to have some control over that money because here today, gone tomorrow. I know. I agree. I feel like she just needs guidance. Guidance. N- not anyone Teddy to Teddy Mellencamp, feel- a life coach. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Just guidance. Not someone that she feels controlled, but just guidance. Yeah. And good people. I'm always, anytime she posts strangers, I'm like, I don't trust you and I don't trust you. I'm like, who is that? Who is that? Obviously, that man driving is just a stranger and like hired to drive the car, which is fine. We we will trust him to get us there safely. But the two people in the back, and who's her, Cade, the guy who's always around her? Do we trust him? Girl, I don't, I don't trust none of them. Okay, I don't either. I'm like skeptical of everybody around her. Uh-uh. I trust Paris Hilton. That's her real friend. <laughs> Honestly, that her real friend is Paris Hilton. Okay. Paris Hilton, sliving. Honestly. Sliving. Paris should recommend a financial manager for Britney, and I think that would make me feel better. Honestly, there. But we I, just came up. Paris with a said, "Girl, I got my babies." She said, "Two of them." But you know what? If I if I do think that if Britney were ever in some sort of like real true danger, I do think that if any celebrity would be the one to help, I do seriously think it would be Paris Hilton. Remember? Yeah. There was a the period of time where it was like no celebrities had heard from Britney Spears and then it was like mm-hmm. Paris Hilton that was the one that was going and visiting her. I'll never forget that. No, um, true. And she did like Selena Gomez for a minute. Selena Gomez was sending her packages. They were corresponding. So, you know, just reach out. Reach out. Well, I got Benny uh, Benny Blanco book at my house, girl. Oh, you did? Did you get it sent to you? The, yeah, it was the I just did the Postmates <laughs> deal, and it was for uh, Benny Blanco's book and his uh, secret sauce. I haven't tried the sauce yet. I'm gonna do it. Okay, for a while, but... I'm curious. <laughs> I will say he posted a, t- a really cute TikTok video of him making Selena Gomez a steak and like bringing it to mm. her, and it was pretty cute. See, uh, and he's growing on me slowly. See, slowly. Baby, but baby, ba- I know baby. because I will say, <laughs> when have we ever seen Selena have a boyfriend like this? Okay. Like Justin and the weekend weren't it for her. Justin you know was getting I mean? pimples popped, and Benny said, "Girl, let me let me cut this steak." Period. <laughs> Y'all see the difference? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that took me out. That took me out. That brought me back to the stories that we used to have to do about Justin Bieber symbols. Thank you for that. <laughs> Courtney, before we talk more about Justin Bieber, can we talk about some female rap beats? <laughs> well, yes. Your favorite. Okay. I want to make sure I'm saying it's Koi. It's Koi Lorraine. Okay. I was, I practiced before, but I was like, <laughs> I don't want to freaking say anyone else's name wrong. Koi LeRae 
suggested on social media that record labels are the ones behind the majority of female rap beefs we see today. Mm. Now, here's the quote. I don't know if you ask me, it may... I don't know if you ask me, it seems like these labels are behind the female controversy. They see it helps push the music. I wouldn't be surprised if they the ones behind the fan pages. Most of these female rappers, not even from the same places, not from the same hoods. Why are we beefing? A fan brought up the perceived beef with Nicki Minaj and Koi, gave, and she gave an update um, saying, quote, <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, this quote is so funny because it is proving her point. <laughs> Y'all so stupid. Me and Nikki spoke behind the scenes personally, and I never brought that to the public. Business ain't work. That's okay. Business ain't work out. That's okay. I still wish her nothing but the best, and Blick Blick is one of the greatest videos that will be in history. <laughs> and Blick Blick. <laughs> and Blick Blick. Courtney, what do we think? <laughs> I actually kind of think she has a point. I, I unfortunately also think that she has like, a point. <laughs> <laughs> she said uh, it in a lot of words, but I feel like she's basically saying it's marketing, it's PR, because if at the crux of it, none of these women have any reason to actually hate one another. Exactly. Which is true. You know what it is, Madison? I feel like, you know how women are always, not women, but like rappers in general, they always have like their mm. entourage, their team, what have you. I think that, you know, you're sitting in the room one day, the hairstylist comes up, ooh, do you see so-and-so? Didn't you wear that? Da, 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 da. Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, the stylist is listening to a song and, oh, did you hear that? I think she's shading you. Or the manager, oh, I heard that, blah, blah, blah. Next thing you know, it turns into a tweet, which turns into a rap verse, which turns into all of this uh, controversy. And Coyle mm-hmm. Ray is no stranger to that as well. Um, but I do think say that, that with was, your whole chest. Like she, like she, li- <laughs> the 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 perceived beef between her and Nicki Minaj was they did this very popular song, "Blick Blick." It's probably one of Nicki's more popular uh, guest verse that she's done. But what happened was, she did the music video for her, promoted it on Queen Radio, mm-hmm. but then she released like a song like a week later, and so Koi felt slighted and like, like almost like she didn't get the full Nicki Minaj. Yeah, yeah like girl. Please hang it up, um, because mm-hmm. when you were getting dragged, the only artist to really support you at the time was Nicki Minaj. So right, you know. and I'm like, you still did a song together, so why would you even? And that's why she—that's basically what she's saying. Like, mm-hmm. we talked and everything's fine. That was more so the fans mm-hmm. feeding into a narrative, which we talk about all the time. We say, oh, and a lot of time, I even hate saying fans because a lot of time the people who are continuing these beefs and talking about this on Twitter aren't actually really deep down fans of anyone. They just are bored and want their opinion out there and documented publicly. They love so that's what's even too. more annoying, in my opinion. But I agree. I do think some beefs are and were real. Like, I do think Cardi and Nikki do not mess with one another. Oh, yeah. But that is deeper. You know what I mean? We as the public have seen them physically have beef yeah that's different than these little orchestrated things here and there oh my god she wore the same skirt mm-hmm. as me oh my god the same wig yes. like yes. you know what i mean girl it's a wig <laughs> exactly but i do think record labels enjoy they they aren't going to deter fans from thinking that because it does bring more attention to the music which yeah. isn't necessarily great but it is what it is i feel like we love comparing people. We love seeing beef. We love drama. Like, that's you, just who we are. You know what, Madison? Sometimes the music industry, since we're talking about, like, the label industries, like, pushing drama, I feel like sometimes the music industry is like the WWE. It's like some of it is, like, scripted so that mm-hmm. we can, like, start focusing on one yep. or both of the opponents. And then no matter what the outcome of the battle is, like, both people have grown their platform off of drama, which is kind of strange. You know? no. Or do we look at it as entertainment? Because these are real people. I don't know. I feel like this is hard because I don't love WWE. Like, I'm always like, I don't understand why we're into this if we know that it's fake. I'm so confused. It's so, fun. But it is But it is fun. And I feel like as long as no one takes it too seriously. And maybe mm. I'm just like a little scarred because we had Cardi fans come for us and they take it really seriously. Yeah. So I'm like, as long as everyone can have, and this is asking a lot of the internet and people, if everyone can have an overwhelming sense of like maturity that we're not going to take all of these beefs too crazy. Cause people, are then I, right. then I think it's fine and you know, have your fun, whatever. 
But I feel like it just that needs to be made clear because I feel like once people start really taking them seriously, that's when things can borderline. It's not fun anymore. Yeah, you know, you know? rap and hip hop can be competitive, but like you said, mm-hmm. Madison, once it comes off the song, then yeah. girl, I'm stepping away. I, I mm-hmm. don't subscribe to that, but I love a fun a fun jab. Me too, verse, and like you know? I love a good back and forth. You know Same. what I mean? I love a good diss track, but as soon as it starts becoming beyond that. No weapons. No. No weapons. No violence. No violence. We don't condone that. But if you want to keep putting out great songs, oh, yeah. I will be listening and I will be streaming. Are we in the club? Because <laughs> I love, I also love pettiness. You know what I mean? Like, Same. I live for the pettiness. The fact that Nicki Minaj, Cent. right. That's why we love 50. The fact that Nicki can put out a diss track in like 48 hours, I don't care what people have to say. I know people didn't love it, but that's impressive. And we're and still that talking I live about for. it. And we're still you know? talking about it. So I would say she won that. Little back and forth, but that's just me. You know I agree. I know. Especially because <laughs> we got one eye on Megan Thee Stallion after last week. And if you don't know what we're talking about, go listen to the last episode because, y'all, Girl, it's not good. You gotta pay people. It's not looking good. And she needs to, to clear that up before she goes on her tour. I know. And she hasn't yet. I've been waiting. It's crazy. Also, why aren't more people talking about it? Girl, because girl, I, the record labels. No, I'm just kidding. The record labels. They're 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 uh they're burying it, girl. They're burying it. <laughs> they hired Chris Jenner to try to Lord get that you. coverage to go away. Um, mm-hmm. but definitely, yeah. If you are confused about the Megan Thee Stallion tea, go listen to last week's episode because we get into it and it's something you don't want to miss. Mm-hmm. Um, some more good tea. Good. Oh, this is a lot of music this week. So Courtney, I love I feel like it. you're you're thriving during this episode. Uh, can we talk about our girl Taylor because she is breaking records Just left cool. and right? Literally, the top fourteen songs on the Billboard Hot 100 are all from the Torture Poet Experiment. Not surprised at all. That gets a well, yes, from me because I mean I enjoy the album, and you know what? Um, I'm loving that at least on my timeline, Madison. The 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 majority of the haters that I've unmuted. That were my mutuals. They're start. They're starting to warm up to the album a little bit, or at least yes. finding like little tracks that they like. Um, you know, you're not gonna love everything right off the bat. No, you know. But uh, and I'm, honestly, even as a Swifty, I have to listen to things a couple times. Same, same. Like absolutely. it takes me a while to process. Like I'm just now. Now I'm evolving a new favorite. Guilty as sin is becoming is I, slowly. That's the newest one I just added to my like song. Moving up my list, of course yes. it is, because we're right here. We're yes, right here, always the lows <laughs> are linked no matter what. But you know, it's like I wasn't obsessing over that song over my first what couple weeks of listening, and now yeah. I'm like, mm, okay, moving up, moving up spots, you know. And I feel like people are also realizing it's not cool to hate Taylor Swift. And I say yeah, that all the time. I think, it's, I think it's weird that people think that that's like a personality trait. It's not. It doesn't make you niche. It doesn't make you cool. It doesn't make you unique. Like, it just makes you boring because you're trying to suck the fun out of the room for everybody else. Yeah. And you know what? That goes for just anyone. That anyone. Goes out of their way to like, I, I say uh, always like yucking someone's yum. Like, don't you hate yes. when you be like, I love da da da. And someone is like, oh God, I hate X, Y, and Z about that. Yeah. Like, girl, ain't nobody asked you all that. Yeah. Because I love like, it regardless. Just honestly, pretend, just don't say anything. I'd rather yeah. you just not say anything. Close your lips. <laughs> Literally. I always say, uh, people have gotten mad at me when I say I've come to the conclusion that people who don't like Taylor Swift just don't have taste. And people are like, can you please stop saying that because it's rude and ah, da 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 da. And I'm like, no, I know it's rude and I'm not meaning anyone to take it that seriously, but also just like the taste. I'm sorry. I stand by what I said. Like, and nobody asked you to respond. (laughs) I know you, you know me though. Sometimes it's hard. I'm like, I hurt somebody's feelings. I didn't mean to. Wow. You guys, Courtney has been on me. He always says, if you find yourself writing a paragraph, Madison, delete it because it is not worth the response. And Courtney, the amount of times that I have said that in my head, I can't even tell you. It's not worth it. uh, Unless you can find a way to spin it to get you more engagement, leave it alone. Yes, exactly. And this is why I go to Courtney for a lot of things, everybody, because he always calms me down, brings me back to reality. Um, What about Charlie Puth (laughs) reacting to Taylor mentioning him in the song. I I don't love Charlie Puth. Ugh, I feel better now that here's I the, that. Here's the thing. 
Um, the lyric about Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist is hilarious because I found one of my old tweets from last year and it was like going off. Like, oh my God, Charlie Puth's new album is so good, blah, 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 blah. I said, oh, well, yes, this lyric is about me. Um, <laughs> Charlie Puth. Uh, I think he's an atten- attention seeker. But keep he going. is an attention seeker. He is a queer baiter. Um, but I like the music. I do. I'm not going to lie. Um, should he be a bigger artist? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. But uh, he's all right to me. Yeah. He just reposted her out. Like, she did an Instagram post recently talking about the billion streams mark. And he reposted on his Instagram story and it blew up everywhere. And I guess I'm just irritated because I'm like, I feel as though Charlie Puth loves any and all attention, whether it's negative or positive. Mm-hmm. Because some people are saying the line that Taylor said could be looked upon as shade. Others are like, oh, no, it's, you know, she's giving him a compliment. And I feel like Charlie Puth doesn't care. He's just like, Taylor Swift, men- Taylor Swift mentioned me and... Let me drop I'm an gonna, album. Yeah, I'm going to use this to my advantage as much as possible. So when I saw his the story getting picked up that he reacted... By just posting on his Instagram story, I was like, this is exactly what Charlie Puth wanted. And that's just how I felt about it. He wins again, Madison. I and I didn't want him to win. But you know who's also trying to win but is not winning? We also got who's a losing? report about uh, Joe Alwyn's reaction to Tortured Poets Department this week. Yikes. From People Magazine. So you know it's legit. I always trust People Magazine. Um, a source shared that Joe is, quote, doing well and focused on work. What word? I would. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You literally took the little words what? right what? out of my brain. Right out of my brain. Uh, the insider also said that Joe was, quote, dating and happy. Oh, and yeah. his, his PR a, people put that out there. Oh, just look, wait. He's a great guy and not into any drama. The source also mentioned that Joe has moved on from Taylor and that he certainly doesn't talk poorly about her. And then the source ended their insider info saying, quote, he was in love with her and it just didn't work out. Mm, I feel like it just didn't work out because you're kind of the worst. You know what I mean? Well, we're talking poorly about you, bucko. You <laughs> suck. <laughs> well, maybe we're not talking about you, but we're shortly singing about you. How about that? We're singing about you. And I will say, anyone who, li- I know she didn't sing as much about Joe Allen on Tortured Poets Department as we all thought. But if you listen to So Long London and still think that Joe Alwyn is, like, a stand-up man, if you listen to The Black Dog and think, like, oh, my God, Joe doesn't deserve any hate, I just, like, so sorry, but I disagree. I feel like he deserves a little a little lashing. I agree, and it, it makes me wonder um, if he was uh, self-centered or egotistical, and that's why Taylor left so little content involving him on the album like i don't even want to give his ego the in, the inflation by singing so much about him because i mean if we think about it he already has a whole, a whole album dedicated to him that's the lover album so it almost kind of it's giving like i don't even want to sing about him we were gonna sing about the man that i was with for five minutes which is Courtney? crazy to me that, that's ultimate level shade and that's why i live for this album she's yeah. not even giving joe the attention we thought this whole thing was yes. about Joe. you just blew my mind you're exactly, I, I think you are spot on. It was like, I don't even want to give him the satisfaction of thinking that he impacted me as much as he thinks he did. Like a fake out. To me, it's almost like she's singing about a one night stand. All these feelings for a one night stand, girl? Mm-hmm. She said, sometimes it be like that. <laughs> she said, here's 30 songs. I can't get over it. It was so good. 30. I saw, I saw someone be like, is anyone else, it's like Taylor knew that we're all in our 30s and had finally gotten over the toxic relationship from our 20s, but then wanted to bring it all back again. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> right on time. Right on time. Like, turning 31, we're all good. <laughs> and then actually Taylor just rips us right back into that old headspace. Like, hey, remember how you felt when? <laughs> <laughs> Let me remind you. Now, are you going to text him? <laughs> Does he North think base. about you? No. <laughs> no. We're not. We're no. not. But it does get us in our feels. You know what I mean? And I agree. She is, the thing about Taylor is it almost takes you three, four weeks to realize the amount of shade in every album. Yeah. Because it, you, I mean, it's just so many layers. Calculus level shade. 
Exactly. And I was not good at math. So that's why it takes me, me a little bit to get to <laughs> Three months later, I bet. Oh, that's what that lyric oh meant. Oh, I know that's right. <laughs> we did know. We did get thank you, Amy, right away, though. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Girl, thank you I for mean, the clues, girl. Yeah. Thank God she capitalized that K and I in the M. Or Courtney and I would be like two months behind. Like, Oh, my I God. I think that was about Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I would have been like, whose daughter? <laughs> whose daughter? Northy? Okay. Courtney, we have to end this episode talking about something that gets the girls upset. Oh, and God. I'm nervous and I already have upper lip sweat, but we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we didn't discuss. Going back to Mr. Pimples himself, Justin Bieber. Pimple. Yep, unfortunately. <laughs> what do you think about him posting two photos of himself crying on Instagram? No caption. And then Haley commenting, a pretty crier with the smiling tear emoji. <laughs> me. <laughs> me. Me when my crush is crying on Instagram. Um, You're gorgeous. Me just literally thinking of anything to comment. Um, I know people that do this all the time. I post, don't know post why this is of them news. crying? Madison, do you remember? This is such a core memory of mine, and I get to use core memory because I just saw the first 35 minutes of Inside Out 2 at the Disney thing. <gasps> A core oh. memory of mine is us being in that Holly Scoop office. I had never thought about it this way ever. And you had brought up when David Dobrik, I'll never forget, David Dobrik and Liza Koshy broke up. And you were like, I could never imagine sitting down in community. This was before Madison even thought to, you know, have <laughs> I was a not a YouTuber. Panel. She was like, the thought of sitting down, turning on your camera, and crying is beyond me. <laughs> and I had never... And it's that's how I know I'm like wow I'm too wrapped up in this. I had never <laughs> thought of it that way because that was so normal to me, of like creators like just sitting up there yeah. crying on camera. So like what is different? I will <laughs> from say David Courtney, and Liza crying up on the camera and Justin Bieber crying up on the camera. I have cried now on camera. Sometimes. <laughs> Damn it, Madison. <laughs> but. But it was like, while I'm talking, it wasn't like me turning on him. I still, that Liza Koshy and David Dobrik video, I stand by it. That was weird as hell. And I stand by it. I've never seen anything like that. That is weird to me because they fully like sat down, turned on the camera and were like, let's go through everything that went wrong in our relationship right now for the first time. That was crazy. For millions. That was crazy. Okay. Me, I was like talking about real life things and I got a little teary. Normal. In my opinion, okay? I'm not, like, trauma dumping on everybody no. for the first time with my partner. That is still the weirdest video. Stand by <laughs> it. I still think it's weird that this man knows what people are saying about him on the internet, and he thought, you know what? Let's post a picture of some weed, me performing, and just throw in a couple ones with me having tears rolling down my face. I thought it was weird, and then Haley's comment was even weirder to me. I wish she wouldn't have said anything. A, a pretty honestly, crier is hilarious. A pretty crier. I was like, That's girly, hilarious. leave hearts. You are you are doing too much. She maybe, reached just a little too far. Maybe he was making a statement like, real men cry. I cry Which, too. Okay. A mental health statement. I cry too. Let it out. Like let, which, Elsa said, let it go. He said, let it drop. <laughs> Sorry for all the Disney references today, y'all. No, I'm living for it. This is a Disney episode. My favorite kind. I just... I don't know, Courtney. I thought it was weird. I thought it was weird. But, and, but you know what? If Selena had did the same thing, the internet would be ripping her to shreds, too. So maybe it is weird. I don't know. I, I don't just know. looked at it as like, you know... You know, you just throw it in the little carousel. I've seen weirder things down. thrown in a carousel. So I was like... Why is this I, headlines? I saw that, and then I saw Haley's comment, and I said, oh, Lord. A pretty crier. Oh, Bieber, why do you do this to me? Because now, now I have to discuss this. And I what? never want I never want to discuss them, because I feel like people always come for me, because they're like, you hate Haley. I'm like, I do not hate Haley. I do not hate Justin. Truly wish them the best. Like Madison Hill, I think, I wonder why this is a headline, because I'm almost certain that Jaden Smith did the same thing. Like Posted of him a crying few, a few months ago. Also, well, Madison, people are still talking about their Madison. video at Coachella. Yeah. What was happening in that video there? Okay, <laughs> I was like, oh no, what do you know that I don't know? Um, 
the because video. It, I the, don't want to sing the song because that man is a monster, but there was some bumping and grinding. No, there was. There what was. was that about? And, I'm, I'm and not I, judging. No, me neither. Me neither. I'm just I, curious. You know, unfortunately, I've watched that video more times than I care to have watched you it. You said it, not me. Because I was just like, I know my eyesight is wonky, but I just want to make sure I'm seeing what I'm seeing. You were seeing Justin I'm, give him the kiss on, give him the peck. Um, and it was on the neck. It was yeah. a neck pack. The name pack. instantly went to. Uh, yeah. Which, you know, I know friends greet each other in I all love different ways. I love affection. I am a hugger, you know. Mm. I don't typically bump and grind from the back as a greeting and then go in for a neck kiss. That is, <laughs> that is a bit much for me. <laughs> Chris is not running up behind you. No. And if someone did, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be stossy with the backhand in a second. I'd have to catch myself and be like, who is that? <laughs> Just. Weird. I think but, we, we moved on from that really fast. Oh, the I, I mean, I haven't forgotten about it, to be honest I with know you. I didn't I, either, but they, everyone it, seemed to but have But like, everyone did. Everyone was really hot on it for like three days, and then it was like, oh, okay. Because everyone's like, they're just friends. What's wrong with greeting just friends? And the reaction nothing. to this is not okay. And But if that was... um. If that, let me not even use him as an example. Here's a better example. If that were like Keenan and Kel, Kel running up on Keenan like that, we would never let that go. We would never stop talking about it. What? Why? I know really what a random that. parent. Right? You yeah. really pulled that out. I was out. thinking of like two male besties that were black. I know you were. <laughs> but I didn't want to use a rapper because they're going to beat my ass. So I was like, Keenan and Kel not going to beat my ass. So, but y'all, you, y'all know what I'm saying, right? We moved on really quick from that. Mm -hmm. Why is that? There's nothing wrong with that. No. But why the conversation stop? And honestly, it's fine either way. And it, if it is just a greeting, and Haley, what you thought about that? And Haley was allegedly there later in the evening. I don't know. It's what's also weird is that he also did post poke pokers, pictures from Coachella of like him greeting Will and Jade. It, oh, I think so. I think he was trying to be like. I think that was his way of saying like, "Look, I'm close with the whole family," but the video is still interesting. Um. Now that you've mentioned that the family is there, no, no, I'm... the family wasn't there during the video. Oh, the but, in, but in posted, general, the pictures he posted were from a different time at Coachella oh, where he was wow. greeting them. It wasn't from the same time that he was. Okay, so smoking. maybe it was like a oh, I'm that's my I, family. Yeah, which oh. I don't greet my sister like that. But, <laughs> Damn it! <you> know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't greet my sister like that. I don't. I, I'm going to keep an eye on that. But I, I found that to be very interesting, how, how you said it was very hot for a moment, mm -hmm. and then it was just like overnight. We just like stopped talking about it. But if that was Keenan and Kel, we would have never really, I think really, I really think several other people it would have not gone away, honestly. But um, I don't know, whoever Haley hired to help Justin with his team is mm -hmm. slaying good yeah. job shout out to you shout out to you i will say there is a report from entertainment tonight that came after the crying photos because mm. you knew someone had to follow it up and they are saying that justin is facing some difficulties mm. but you know Haley, Haley's doing her best we always got to add that in Haley's being a wifey of she course. doesn't like to see him struggle mm -hmm. they're doing their best to be supportive of one another it is crazy that we're always getting a similar same report, but nothing seems to change. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like we're to always me, getting it, that same thing. It, it, to me, it seems like, why are we not getting no album? And then it's like, well, y'all know Justin said, look at this report, look at this report, look at this report, look at this report. Justin, get your ass in the studio if you're not mm -hmm. sick. If you're not sick. If you're sick, go ahead and rest. You okay? 
Mm-hmm. If you're not sick, Justin, get your ass in the studio. I don't know what you're scared of, but you need to face that fear, uh, swallow that demon, and um, we need you to get back in there, baby, baby, baby. Oh, okay. Well, I need, if he's going to get back in there, I need old, no pressure, but I need old Justin. I need sorry. And put Jaden on the bonus track. <laughs> no. Now you're making me giggle too much. What? That's we can't get Jaden on the album? You're very messy. <laughs> <laughs> we Jaden Smith get on this album. Okay. <laughs> that was a good. You're right. They are besties, clearly. They are be- y'all look at that video one more time and tell me what you what is happening here. I uh, now I can't stop thinking about it. I'm just curious cuz Justin married. Mhm. Everything else aside, you married. Mm-hmm. You kissing on this man net. Mhm. Let me mind my business. <laughs> And on that note, we're just going to move on to our last segment. (laughs) And And put it it in the teapot. Yes, you guys, please send us your submissions to put in the teapot at toasttoteapod at gmail.com. You can also comment below if you're watching this on YouTube or send us a DM on Instagram or TikTok. Please give us your submissions. We love to hear from you. For this week's Put It in the Teapot, I would like to encourage you to take a chance on a new adventure. Um, I know a lot of people, including myself, that maybe receive an opportunity and you might be like, oh, I'm not into that or I would never do that. Um, But I really think it's important for you to take a chance and take a risk on yourself. Um, Just even, you know, going to the Disney Summit, I've always been like the strange one um, in a group of black friends. Um, And this particular program really proved to me that there are so many other people like me. Um, And it was really awesome that I took that chance and checked my email (laughs) <laughs> um, and actually went to the summit um, because I could have woken up and you know realized that my birthday was this week and just said no. Um, so please, 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 I encourage you to get out there, um, face your fears, find your community, take a chance, um, and really open your mind and your heart to just growing because you don't have to grow by yourself. You can find your people and grow with your village as well. I love that. Thanks. I love that. I'm so happy that you went on this Disney thing and had so much fun. I really like it's did. A, it's a great pre-birthday celebration. Yeah, I never. I didn't even realize. I was like, oh, my birthday is on Sunday. I was like, well, I'm going to Disneyland. Oh, mm-hmm. cool. Yes, uh, fellow tourists, Cinco de Courtney. Hello. Yes, Can never forget it. Okay, the thing that I want to put in the teapot this week is being afraid to ask for help. I am really, really, really bad at asking for help. I have been my entire life and also, shocking to no one, in my adult life, I feel like I always have this overwhelming sense that I need to do everything by myself and I need to figure it out by myself because I don't want anyone to be put out or anyone to feel like, you know, they have to drop everything, even though I have no problem doing that for other people. But I never want anyone to feel like they're put out by me. And I am realizing with age comes wisdom. Isn't that the truth? Um, Also beauty. But I'm realizing as I'm getting older that asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's actually a sign of strength because you're recognizing you can't do it all and that is okay. We are not meant to do it all. God did not put us on this earth to be solo creatures. He put us on this earth, like Courtney was saying, to have a community. So I am no longer being scared to ask for help and you shouldn't either. Let's utilize the people in our life to make us all stronger. I know that's right, girl. Yes. Ah, I, I, love when, I love when we have a good personal put it in the teapot. It's like yeah. a good little like soul cleansing yeah, when we know, end the episode. I hope that, you know, the put it in the teapots are good for the community to just take mm-hmm. sort of like these final thoughts and just like apply it to your week, you know? Yes, I'm glad that we exactly. have that it. Yes, and also remember... For your submission, it can be personal, it can be celebrity related. We've put celebrities in the teapot, you know. Yeah, what you mean? can just rant. <laughs> yeah, like whatever you feel like you need to get off your chest, get it off the chest. And that's exactly what put it in the teapot is for. So mm-hmm. please submit. We love hearing from our community. And also on that note, you guys, if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you like this video, subscribe, notification bell, make sure you share. We're so close to a thousand subscribers. I We're know. so close. 
We're so close, Courtney, to our How first. How about this, Madison? Goal. If once we reach a thousand subscribers, um, we should try to go live because I think yes. that, that is our only our last like requirement is the yes. subscribers. Yes. So please subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Also, make sure you are subscribing on Spotify. Wherever you get your podcasts, make sure you're also participating in the Spotify poll because that helps us out as well. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you're following us on TikTok and Instagram at Toasted Tea Pod. You can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at I am Madison Hill and Madison Hill ninety three on Snapchat. And uh, you can follow me at Courtney Revolution on Instagram and at Court Revolution on TikTok and Twitter and the old Snapchat Rooney. Yes, yes, you guys. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in, and we will see y'all next time. Bye, guys.